the full written instructions in the owner and installer manual. The pump provided is good for up to 6 metres from the ground to the top of the panels. Otherwise order the booster pump for a 12 metre lift. Group the tank and panels as close together as possible with the tank preferably closest to the area of most use. And minimise piping runs with a maximum of 20 metres from the tank to the panels. This slide shows the importance of set out by leaving 500 millimetres clear around the panels to allow for service and allowing for high wind situations by keeping the bottom of the panels 1200 millimetres from all roof edges. Allow for full drainage of the panels for service and frost conditions by skewing them 25 millimetres off square on the mounting frames. These two standards provide guidance to allow you to determine likely wind pressures you are advised to obtain a copy and study them. The wind pressure is always highest around the roof perimeter. You must also comply with all local and national building codes and use only the fastener supplied or an equivalent corrosion resistant class 4 fastener. This is a tricky subject as wind speed, exposure, and the sensor wire is fragile. Avoid sharp edges and protect it as necessary with conduit. Seal the entry point in the roof and do not run it with the uninsulated hot outlet pipe. Secure it reasonably loosely to an insulated pipe with cable ties. After flushing, check carefully for leaks before fitting the insulation cover. The water heater is installed in exactly the same manner as Saxon heat exchange water heaters. Check the mains pressure. If it is over 1100 kPa, connect a pressure limiting valve as required by law. If it is over 800 kPa, consider connecting a limiting valve as this may prevent the possibility of water hammer if it is going to occur. Disconnect the union or elbow on the solar return, taking care not to lose the restrictor. Disconnect the solar supply pipe fitting and connect to mains pressure. Flush all pipes to remove any thread seal tape or other debris. Cap the return pipe and pressurise the solar circuit to test for leaks. Fill the tank with water. Just because water runs from the reticulation pipes does not mean that the tank has been filled. Water must flow from the overflow pipe. Lead the pump to prime it. Before turning the power on, prime the pump and purge air from the pump by removing the screw and allowing air to escape and water to dribble from the hole. Refit the screw and check for leaks. One of the most important items when commissioning is to ensure complete solar circulation. Switch the power on, the pump runs, for one minute. Confirm that the pump is running by switching on every minute and keep the pump operating. Or a qualified person can bridge the two brown active wires together on the board to force the pump to run when the power point is turned on. Set the pump speed to one, two or three, start at one and then work up to a higher number. Do not start on a higher number first and work down for maximum power saving. Normally, one or two are for higher ceilings and three is for high-pitched roofs. The preferred method to check for full circulation is to disconnect the panel outlet fitting with the pump on and observe the discharge. Or, disconnect the solar return pipe at the tank elbow fitting and temporarily cap the tank fitting to stop the tank from draining and observe the discharge. Always be aware of possible high temperatures. Then repeat for the other pump settings. After reconnection check. This control board is under the lower cover. The only connection for you to make is the sensor cable. All other connections have already been made in the factory. Insert the sensor cable through the cable gland. Knot it behind the gland to prevent accidental withdrawal. 
and connect the wire by pressing in the button and inserting the wire in the terminal. Then check it. The control board diagnoses its own faults and indicates operating conditions. The red light indicated shows the conditions listed in the manual. Note that when the power is switched on, the pump runs for one full minute and then reverts to normal operation. This is the way to check the pump's operation. These two short flashes indicate a sensor fault. These are the joiners for joining the short sensor lead in the ceiling space from the panels to the long sensor lead brought up from the tank below. Two joiners must be used, not one.